Okay, Shalom. One. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises. Glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekah, Hadash. Double honor to the other apostles, the great millstone, the new will, salutation to the most highest wind in the four corners of the earth, pushing his word of sincerity and truth. Shout out to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This is your brother, Ben Yum Yum, from East Mississippi. With a walk and talk topic going into three metrics. You have the mind, you have the body, and you have the soul. And if you look at how you have to continuously nurture and feed all three, it goes into what the Bible calls balance. And in certain aspects, you have to be strengthened because when it comes to balance, it's you juggling all three metrics, right? So if you're juggling all three metrics, sometimes one can outweigh the other, and sometimes one can be lesser than the other. But what you have to find is an equilibrium, which is a level playing field that you may be able to be balanced in all aspects. Because when it comes to the mind that's both dealing with the things that you deal with in your personal life, the things that you deal with in your spiritual life, your duties, your responsibilities, and your obligations. All of those things take a toll upon, and I'll just speak to the Israelite man right now, because he is the breadwinner, he is the laborer, he is the provider, and he is the protector. And having all of that in mind to be able to continue to develop your character and develop who you are as a man, especially an Israelite man, especially a man in the truth, you deal with a lot. And a lot of individuals don't take that into account. You know, they expect to, to see you with a smile all the time. They expect you to naturally handle and juggle every dart of life that's thrown at you. And now looking at body, the scripture says that bodily exercise profited little, but it lets you know that it also profit, profited, right? So if we look at your physical physique, your physical health, your physical well-being, you know, where exactly on that spectrum are you, right? Because the same way that we have to examine ourselves, whether we be in the faith meaning measuring up to the scriptures, we also have to examine ourselves whether we are taking care of the Mosai's temple, right? Because as the scripture states, our body is a temple. So if our body is a temple, that means that it is a, what a term that Jake coined called a humble abode when they started buying houses started inviting others over to come see, you know, that major accomplishment. They called it a humble abode. It was their peace, it was their dwelling, right? So are you taking care of the Mosai's temple? Because if you're not, that affects your mind, right? Your physical physique affects how you maneuver. It affects how you think. It affects how you feel about yourself. Okay, it affects your self-esteem, whether you feel that you're worthy or unworthy. So a lot goes into it. And now take a look at the soul, right? We covered mind, we covered body, and now let's take a look at the soul. Now, the Most High has given us the mind, he's given us the body, and how now we can ensure that we are encaptivating to the best of our ability what the soul intakes. You know, that simply goes into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, you know, of doing the whole duty, you know, of the Most High, right? Because as it states, you know, what is the, the, the whole duty of man? And it says to do the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Judges chapter 5 and 11, right, talks about in that land of drawing waters, 
right? We were going to rehearse the righteous acts of the Heavenly Father. So, in order to have your soul protected, in order to have your soul taken care of, you have to do what? You have to do those things that are well pleasing unto your how about shimmy how shot. So when you please the Heavenly Father, you feel good about that. The same way with a child, because it doesn't matter your age in today's society. We're still all children of the Heavenly Father, right? And that's coming up, you always felt good about that favorite man in your life, whether it was your grandfather, whether it was, whether it was your father, whether it was, whether it was an uncle or whether it was an, an older brother or a simple, simply a person that was not flesh and blood, but a male figure that you looked up to. And when you did something to please that individual or put a smile on their face, it made you feel what? You got this sense of, this sense of accomplishment. You got this sense of, oh man, yes, you know? So how did that make you move afterwards? It made you move differently. It made you move with a sense of pride. It made you move with a sense of leadership and a sense of, 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 of accomplishment as, as well as accountability. And taking care of our soul as we live in these bodies that the Most High gave us, as we live in this life that the Most High has given us, and as we live battling the entanglements of this spiritual and this carnal warfare, doing those things that please the Most High is, is what places a juggernaut spirit inside of you, you know, whether you believe it or not. Because when you think about it, when your spirit is very low, when your spiritual intellect is very low, and you don't have the Most High in all your thoughts, how do you feel? You feel unworthy, you feel like the Most High is not dealing with you, you don't feel motivated. A lot of things go into that. So that's why the mind and the body and the soul, when you just look at it, on those three particular simple metrics that encaptivates you moving with complete balance and you moving wholeheartedly in a way that not only benefits you as a person, but it builds a closer relationship with you and the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And that's what's most important. And that's why when you pray, or at least when I pray, but it's a recommendation that I that I would have just as a brother, you know, when you pray, you know, pray for gifts from the Heavenly Father that will get you closer to him. You know, praying to the Heavenly Father to bless you with a better relationship with him. Right? To bless, uh, to bless you, to continue to do and enhance those things that are well pleasing in his sight. But that's mostly where we always fall short. We fall short of doing those things on a consistent basis that are pleasing unto the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. But it's very important to always keep that in mind that mind, body, and soul is what enhances you as a person. It increases your mental capacity to drive results. It increases your spirituality in order to get closer to the Heavenly Father. And all in all, when you look at self-improvement and self-development, it makes you a better person, right? Because the only thing that we have in this life right now is our name. And many don't look at us as having a great name. They don't look at us as having um, certain levels of etiquette, certain levels of spirituality, and that's fine and dandy. Because you have the Heavenly Father stated what he said. In the land that thou would put to shame, the Most High is going to give us what? It's going to give us fame in that land. It's going to give us glory in that land. Right? But that goes into wait ye upon the Heavenly Father until I rise up against the prey. So the Most High is going to rise up against our adversaries. And, it's, um, and that's going to be a beautiful day. But up until that particular point, taking care of this temple that the Most High has given us, taking care of our mind that the Most High has given us because we're not bugged out and taking care of our soul that the Most High has blessed us with to constantly be reminded of Him. And when you sum all three of those up, you go right back into the Old Testament 
of the commandments on the heavenly father and how he stated to entreat thy neighbor as thou would entreat thyself. Everything I just named routes right back into literally one verse. And then the most I further clarified, he said what? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet, right? Thou shalt not envy. When you take care of those three metrics, you will always continuously be better off and pray unto the Most High to continue to make you better off by enhancing those three metrics that you may have a perfect balance, not leaning too far in the carnal and not leaning too far in the spiritual. Because I want to say this as well, you know, some of, some individuals can be a spiritual power horse and be a completely dodo, a complete dodo bird in real life. But you're living real life. So you got to find a balance as well. You can't be a simpleton. You know, you can't be walking around talking about I'm Judah, I'm bold as a lion, I'm this, that, and the third. But you lack the basics in understanding what a man is. You lack the basics in understanding emotional maturity. You lack the basics in understanding uh, integrity. And the list can go on and on and on and on and on. You know, but you can quote Bible verses like you just read them 30 seconds prior. And on the contrary, you could be, <laughs> as the world would call it, a real nigga. You can be the realest nigga in the world. Everybody know your name. You know, you're damn near on a low level of, of influencer or low level local celebrity type stuff. But when it comes to the spiritual, you know, you scratch your head when it comes to doing what the Lord said. You scratch your head when it comes to understand what a breakdown is. You scratch your head when you have to make a decision between doing right and wrong, right? So I just gave you two extreme ends of the spectrum, which both are not good to have, right? But balance in mind, body, and soul, that's very good to have because as an individual, you will make better decisions. You will get closer to the Heavenly Father and your mind will be steadfast set upon doing what the Heavenly Father says, being still and allowing him to work, whether it's in your favor or against it, and you just move accordingly. So most eyes will, you receive some quick edification from this walk and talk. And until next time, I want to say Shalom.